Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are doing an installation of the Redshift shock stop suspension stem and I will share you my personal experience if this is worth installing in your gravel rig. So let's get to it. Before anything else, I just wanted to say that this is not sponsored. This was purchased using my own money. My main purpose is to share you my personal experience after using this stem for over 300 miles. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. For me, I find the manual easy to follow and it's really not that complicated to replace a stem. Included in the instruction is how to pick the right elastomers based on your weight. It's nicely wrapped with plastic and secured with zip ties. So let's get this thing out so you can see what it looks like. Included in the package is a T25 wrench, which is really nice, especially if you don't have one on hand. So here's what the stem looks like. I picked the non-pro model in a 19 millimeter length, plus and minus six degrees. In terms of the quality, I think it's manufactured well, and it seems sturdy enough to withstand the abuse from all the bumps. I'm not a weight weenie, but for those who are curious, it is 266 grams for this 90 millimeter stem. In comparison to a Zip Course SL stem, this is about 130 grams heavier. Just keep in mind that elastomers are factory installed in a plus 6 orientation, but if you're installing it in a minus 6, then you need to flip the placement of the elastomers inside. You'll see later on what I mean. Anyway, the install is like any other standard stem, so let's go ahead and speed things up. Here, you'll see I installed my stem in a minus six orientation, but the elastomers are on the opposite side. So what I did was I removed the elastomers and I installed it on the upper quadrant. It is secured by a preload wedge, which keeps those elastomers in place. To remove, you can use the T25 wrench provided. Just keep in mind that the handles on the elastomer should face outwards so it won't interfere with the installation of the preload wedge. You might now pull out those elastomers using your fingers so here's a tip. You can use the short end of an allen wrench to pull them out and that should do the trick. Okay, now to get the bolt started, I use the supplied T25 wrench, then I finish it up with a ratchet wrench. Also according to the instruction, the torque spec for the bolt is 1.5 to 2.5. Now here is the important part. To avoid cross threading the preload bolt, you will need to apply pressure by pushing down the end of the stand tube to make sure the bolt will line up and engage properly with the threads. Otherwise, the stem will be useless if the threads are all messed up. Once you get the bolt started, then you can finish it up using the ratchet wrench to speed things up since you will need about 32 turns to tighten this bolt. If 
you have a bike computer mount, make sure to get it out of the way and don't be lazy like me, especially if you need space to tighten the bolts for the stem face plate. Also, very important to torque things up according to the recommendations. Here is the stem in action. As you can see, I'm trying to break in the elastomers by applying upper body weight to simulate riding on trails. This stem has a 20mm effective travel, the same with specialized future shock, but the difference is that the shock stop has an actual compliance versus future shock's vertical compliance. Basically, the farther you are from the pivoting mechanism, the more shock is absorbed. To make it simple, there is more flex on the hoods versus the drops. Compared to future shock, you are getting shock absorption on all sections of the handlebar, kinda like an MTB front suspension. I took the bike out on my neighborhood trail to show you how the stem works and how it handles trail chatter as I rode through bumps and small loose rocks. Coming through this turn, I tried to roll over a small eroded section and you can see that the stem took a lot of that force. Let's do a slow motion and pay attention on that circle. The trail where I'm at is a multi-use trail with loose rocks and you might notice some vibration on my arms on this video but I can feel the stem working. Now imagine what would that do to your body while riding for a prolonged period on a rigid fork and stem. I'm pretty sure that will beat you up pretty good if you're doing a long ride. Here we are on the paved trail and we're trying to set up for two sprints. One on the hoods and another one on the drops. For the first sprint, my hands are placed on the hoods. Observe the flex on the stem. Let's play that again in slow motion and pay attention on the circle. Now, let's shift to the drops and do another sprint. Here in the demo, there is barely any flex on the stem. Why is this important to me? Well, I think when I'm putting down the power, I need the front to be stiff and stable and usually we generate a lot of watts when sprinting. I know higher versions of the future shock has options to decrease dampening, but if you can eliminate that one step and jump on a sprint right away, then that may be something to consider. To finish this video, I think the stem is 100% worth the money. It does a pretty good job in absorbing bumps, especially with gravel terrain. It has a tendency to fatigue the body over time. Now after putting this stem through its paces, both on paved and gravel, I'm confident to say that this stem is a good investment. If you want to push the boundaries of comfort and go further, you can also check Redshift's suspension seat post. Okay, that is it for the video and if this video gave you value, please smash that like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Peace!